This video is about codons, degeneracy, and sickle cell anemia. We first start out by exploring the universality of the genetic code and how it functions in living things. We look at how to use codon charts to determine the amino acids encoded by specific sequences of three nucleotide bases in messenger RNA known as codons. We also explore the degeneracy of the genetic code, which protects against mutations. Finally, we look at disruptions in codons, or mutations, and we explore sickle cell anemia as an example of a disease caused by a point mutation. These key concepts are some of the most important topics covered in the IB biology course. The genetic code defines how the information stored in DNA and RNA is transformed into the sequence of amino acids within proteins. Within living organisms, a limited number of amino acids form the building blocks for a wide range of proteins. Interestingly, the coding system for amino acids is identical amongst most living things. Only the order of amino acids change from protein to protein and organism to organism. This remarkable universality of DNA is the guide it uses to match codons with amino acids to build proteins. And it's the same in most living things. So the code of DNA is universal. We're able to transfer genes between species, confident that the transferred gene coding for a protein will continue synthesizing the same protein in the modified species. And this is due to this universality of the genetic code. We can use the order of the bases in messenger RNA or the codons to determine the order of the amino acids in a polypeptide chain. For this process, we use a codon table. So now that we understand the genetic code is universal in the code for amino acids, let's take a look at how we can decode a nucleotide sequence with a codon chart or codon tables. The table is a model of the genetic code and it illustrates the association between nucleotide triplets or codons and the specific amino acids that they encode, as well as the start and stop signals for polypeptide synthesis. A standard codon chart displays the 64 possible codons and indicates the amino acid encoded. The chart also indicates the three codons that serve as stop signals or termination codons, marking the end of the polypeptide chain. This first chart here uses a wheel layout to determine the amino acid designated by a particular codon. You begin from the middle and work your way out. So if we had the codon AUG, we could determine which amino acid it codes for. We start with A in the middle, find the section in the next ring that codes for U, then find the subsection in the last ring that codes for G. Here we can see that the codon AUG codes for the amino acid MET, the shortened name for methionine. Now let's look at a different chart that displays the same information but in a different format. Let's say we have the codon UGU. We would look at this first row on the left side of the chart where it says first base in codon and find U. Then we would look at the top of the chart where these columns labeled second codon and find G. We would find the box where the U row and G column intersect. Then we'd look for our last codon, U. The codon UGU codes for the amino acid cis or cysteine. Notice that the codon UGC also codes for cysteine. So either codon, UGU, or UGC codes for cysteine. In fact, many of the amino acids have several different codons that code for it. This is called degeneracy, and it is helpful in that if there is a mutation, particularly a change in the third codon, it's likely to not have an effect on the protein being built. Degeneracy is one way DNA is protected from mutations. The development of a triplet code in DNA stems from having a limited number of bases, which consist of only four nitrogenous bases, A, T, G, and C. Having a triplet code gives 64 possible combinations, leaving many amino acids with several different sequences of nucleotides. And this gives the mutation protection of degeneracy. If the code only consisted of two bases, there are only 16 possible combinations. And this doesn't cover the 20 amino acids that make up proteins. 
If codons were any longer, say in four or fives, degeneracy would increase, but genes would become very long, and the amount of DNA to transcribe as well as replicate would be inefficient. So the triplet code maximizes efficiency while also allowing for some degeneracy. Now that we understand how the triplet code codes for amino acids, let's take a closer look at what may happen when there's a change in the DNA code or a mutation in the DNA. Remember that protein structure is determined by the number and order of the amino acids that are present in a polypeptide chain. The order and number of amino acids determine how the protein folds, which will become the protein structure. The structure of a protein will then determine its function. If the order or number of amino acids change, the protein will likely fold in a different way, which then may affect its function. As we discussed, it's quite possible to have a change in the order of bases of DNA and not have a change in the protein structure or function. This is called a silent mutation. Silent mutations may also occur when they are situated within a DNA region that is currently inactive within that specific cell. However, mutations can sometimes have a drastic impact on protein structure, which will then have an effect on the organism. For a more in-depth look at the different types of mutations and their effects, check out our video on mutations. An example of a mutation is sickle cell anemia. This mutation occurs on one of the genes that codes for hemoglobin, the protein that occurs in red blood cells. The function of hemoglobin is to transport oxygen from the lungs to body tissue and transport carbon dioxide, a waste product, back to the lungs. The mutation that causes sickle cell is a point mutation where a single nucleotide base in DNA has been switched for another nucleotide base in DNA. The unaffected sequence for hemoglobin in DNA is CTC. However, in sickle cell, it's changed to CGC. This leads to messenger RNA changing from GAG to CGC. The change in the messenger RNA codons causes a change in the amino acids as GAG codes for glutamine, while GCG codes for valine. Valine is a hydrophobic, neutral amino acid, while glutamine is an acidic, negatively charged amino acid. The substitution of a negatively charged glutamine with a neutral valine removes the charge, therefore altering the 3D shape of hemoglobin. In the affected polypeptide, the valine creates a hydrophobic portion in the hemoglobin molecule, causing the hemoglobin to polymerize or clump in the red blood cell. When the hemoglobin polymerizes, it causes the cell to stretch into a sickle shape that cannot easily move through the small blood vessels in the body, such as capillaries. When the red blood cells block or partially block blood flow, it may result in sickle cell attacks, where a person with the disorder may feel extreme pain where the sickle cells are blocking circulation to the chest, abdomen, and joints. However, those who are heterozygous with sickle cell, in other words, they have one allele for sickle cell and one normal allele, they have enough unaffected hemoglobin where they do not experience the attacks. The mutated hemoglobin gives resistance to malaria as the misshapen hemoglobin negatively affects the reproductive cycle of the malaria parasite. As a result, instances of sickle cell are more prevalent in populations that reside in areas where malaria spreads. The mutation that causes sickle cell anemia is an excellent example of how one small change in the nucleotide of DNA has an effect on the protein, the organism, and finally whole populations through natural selection. In this video, we reviewed how to read two different types of codon charts both wheel and table formations. We learned that the genetic code is universal. The codons are associated with the same amino acids in most living things. We saw how many amino acids have several different codons that code for them, making degeneracy in the genetic code, which can protect against mutations. We also saw how mutations can change the order of amino acids in a protein, which will change its structure and affect its function. Finally, we looked at sickle cell anemia as an example of a point mutation, and we saw how a single change in the nitrogenous bases of DNA can have an effect on the protein structure and function. 
which affects the organism and finally entire populations.